Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep (sighs) Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes and uh, I'd like to say thank you to the couple of people that have sent me sent me some money on PayPal. Thank you very much. If you'd like to send me a gift, just go to my website. The links are all there. Is now I think. Uh, How many stats have I got? What? Not how many stats. What's the number? Five. Five hundred and... Five hundred and seventeen thousand. Now I've got... I don't know. I keep updating it, but I update it way too regularly. It's literally every time I go and look at the laptop the stats, the overall stats have gone up by a few hundred and I just keep updating it instead of just doing it once a day which would make more sense it gets me all excited and gooey, you know anyway, i just let you know <sighs> the point behind this podcast is to bore you to sleep that's kind of it ain't much more to it than that Uh, sometimes I'll read out of a magazine or a paper sometimes I'll go online in which case I'll do that in the living room so there may be a bit more background Sounds than there is here because I'm using my garden shed in my bedroom to record this now which means Andre can't get to me although I say that but he, he'll always find a way he's, he's, a, he's a little genius he is and um I think he might be a genius mastermind. I'm not sure. I did. I found a twenty-pound note the other day, and it was hidden. And I don't recall hiding that. I think he's stashing money. I do. I hope he's not washing it as well. What do they call that when you... I remember a friend of mine said uh, <clears throat> years ago, he was only just left school, someone asked him to wash some money and he didn't understand what it meant. You know, he didn't understand that he meant you need to go out and spend the money but get the money back, you know. Break a 20 for a a chocolate bar or something and he literally put it in the washing machine yeah not a mastermind never been on mast well of course I'm it's not a course I might have been but no I haven't been on mastermind a television program I suppose I could I just need to have a subject that I know something about. (laughs) That's all. Because all mastermind, I don't know, is there a general, there is a general um, knowledge quiz as well, isn't there, I think, on mastermind. But you do have a, a specialist topic. 
which is not just well I like history maybe records from the past the charts maybe you know television programs no very specific you know kind of hairstyles of Elvis Presley 1957 to 1959 you may think oh, it's only one hairstyle but no you'd be wrong you'd be very wrong very very wrong I do like watching Elvis films they're really good natured very gentle really not completely I mean there's a little bit of a little bit of stuff in there you know but I think Elvis I think he might have wanted to have been an actor and not many people can be in that many films and not actually be an actor I mean by that I mean for someone to star in their own films they're normally and that, you know that's normally their professional profession and he starred in was there 16 films you know he's a very successful actor more successful than most actors that act ever in the whole world he should have got an Oscar for every film he played in Marlon Brando Marlon Brando Elvis yeah not Marlon Brando Marlon Brando I was looking recently on uh, uh, what's it called the internet and it's a Wikipedia kind of strange name really isn't it and I looked up famous actors who had been nominated and won Oscars and I've got a pet peeve, a pet, pet peeve. Call them Oscars or call them Academy Awards. Either Academy Awards or Oscars, don't call them both. Just choose a name, stick to it, and let's all move on with our lives. And an Oscar winner, you know, and the Academy Award winner. Which is it? Well, it's both. We can't. Why have two different names for the same thing? Unless, of course, they are two different things. Then that would make sense. I just realised that might be the case. And Emmys. Why Emmys? If it's an Oscar, why call it an Emmy? <laughs> an Emmy. What does an Emmy even stand for? M -E, e M Y or was it E M M Y Emmy Gotta stand for something And the Pulitzer P Peace Prize Pulitzer the man who it's that created or it was named after He created gunpowder or dynamite, rather. He created dynamite, which was a precursor to what came after. And there's a peace prize named in his name. Oh, 
what's irony? I think maybe I should start the Gaddafi Meditation Center. shed it's very weird it still feels weird to be in a shed I may not have been in a shed before not like this if anything I'd probably prefer it if it was outside as far as sitting in it because then I'd probably have well I might, I might not have the door open and ideally have a windows in the shed so I could look out. But then that would depend on what I'm up to. So maybe have curtains. This is kind of weird, just I don't know. I could sleep in this. I don't need to because I've got a bed. That would be a bit weird to, to do that, but I wonder how much I mean it sheltered me from the rain outside. But it'd be pretty cold, I'm guessing. But up here it's quite warm in here. It feels warmer in the shed than it does in the bedroom. And the shed's in the bedroom. But luckily, I'm only about four foot tall, so it feels like a mansion to me. It's absolutely huge. I can't even see the ceiling. It's six foot tall. I can't even can't even see the ceiling. It's so high up. It's like the stars. It's like, well, it's like the st I can see the stars before I can see the ceiling. Because that's how high it is, it's six foot high. I've got my own little shed. It's like I'm gradually not turning into a pensioner, maybe gradually turning into my dad. He loves his shed, but he's got sheds. Doesn't just have one shed, he's got... Well, I've never seen a shed bigger than his... They don't make sheds as big as he's got. Well, they probably do, but... It'd basically be a house. He goes massive, honestly. I think he's joined about four sheds together. Four big sheds. He's got, he's got a bathroom in his shed. It's got fridges and freezers, you know, he's got, seriously, it's, it's a lot, a lot of space in there. He loves it down there. Well, I don't know if he loves it, but I think he likes it a bit. I never asked him, really. Daddy, do you love your shed? That just doesn't seem to come up. You know, in conversation. He, you know, he likes his shed. But then he's he's into doing practical things, you know. 
like tradesman kind of jobs because uh, he's he was he's so he he can do anything from building electrics plumbing plastering you know anything really he just he can seem to be able to do it all or he, when he was younger he can still do it but he's he's getting on a bit now mind you so am I 49 really I had a dream and uh I was back in the chip shop. This is this is last night. I had a dream, and I was back in the chip shop that I used to work in when I was when I just you know first left school for two years. <sighs> and working there, pretty much. Directed my life for the next 10 years I would say until I was 31 and I got my first job my first proper job in insurance before you know so I kind of I was very aimless when it comes to work and uh, I don't know why but I ended up going there and I was I was allowed to work and do a shift it's not the first time this has happened. Uh, in my dreams, I mean, it has happened before. So I go along and do this shift, and I'm just making mistake after mistake, and he keeps. Um, not so much telling me off but correcting me which never been a big fan of but then how do you learn but you know it's just it was just constant um, correction and constant in front of the other in front of the customers and it just I ended up I didn't I wasn't enjoying it and I don't know why, but I think I went for a walk. Went for a walk. And I ended up in the middle of nowhere. I mean, literally did not know where I was. Did not know where I was at all. I'd originally just went for a walk and I ended up Like in the fields, in in the middle of some fields. I'm like, oh no, I don't recognise any of this. I might have said that. I don't know. I don't think I talk like that in my dreams. I'm usually much more flamboyant, and uh, you know, I don't believe it. Where on earth am I? I. D- I don't recognise any of these trees. That's usually kind of how I speak when I'm asleep. And um, eventually I I thought, oh, oh, how am I going to get back to the chip shop? Because I was supposed to be working. I think I only left to go to the toilet. Just said, I just popped into the toilet and I end up in the middle of a field. And I wasn't camping, so, you know, and I just thought, oh, and I was worried about getting into trouble. I don't mean pregnant, I mean, I was worried that he was going to tell me off. And I went to, I managed to find, yeah, there was a shop, or a bus stop with a shop next to it and the the 
there was lots of people waiting for this bus and I thought the bus has got to take me back to the shop surely got to the chip shops got to take me back to town and the sign on it says 8.50 I don't know if I guess that's p.m. but 8.50 the next bus so I'm thinking oh uh, the next thing I'm there so I don't know if I enjoyed the journey I don't, you know, I don't know but I was there I was upstairs and I was talking to someone that I used to work with in a different job that I used to have <clears throat> and I said to her can you do me a favour can you go downstairs and get my jacket so that I can try to leave without anyone seeing me because my jacket had my phone and my keys and you know stuff that I needed and then the boss came up and I said oh I'd been ill and everything like that and he said oh we'll call an ambulance and I said no no let me sit here I need an ambulance just just wasn't very well so I go downstairs and he seems to be okay with it and there's someone else working there and I I recognised him but I could not tell you who he is genuinely could not tell you who he is now but I recognised him then and he said uh we were just talking about how long he'd been working there and he said he'd been there for ages Still, he was still working there because I hadn't seen him for a long time and I said how come your name's not on the board because I didn't recognise anybody's names on the timesheet of you know people working and he said look I've been doing one evening a week or one day a week for 18 years there's no reason for my name to be on the board. And I thought, oh. And then I looked over, and there was this other lady, and this other lady, a lady who used to work there when I was there. In fact, she started working before me at that place. So I don't know what year, but, she, you know, probably 85, perhaps earlier. And she was still there now. So 85, 95, 2005, 2015, 2025, 2045, 2045. So that'll be 70 years in 2055. But maybe we need to go back. So, 2005, 95, 2005, 2015. So that's 50, that's 30 years. 67, 89, 34 years. I mean, that's as if she was still working out. But in my dream, she was. And she looked exactly the same. But then she looked 90 then. <laughs> no, she didn't. She looked exactly the same. It's like, wow. I reckon she probably does look exactly the same. She's, uh, yeah. I think she's, some people are kind of ageless, aren't they? They just stay, seem to look young forever. I think she was one of those. I don't know. Who knows? I'm one of them. I'm like Peter Pan. I'm not at all. I'm not sure if I really liked Peter Pan. Mm. 
you know, just what's that little the, the little fairy um, Tinkerbell? She clearly loved Peter Pan. Didn't even give her didn't give her a chance to do. Just because well, I just think it's just wrong. I think it was prejudiced. Just because you look like Julia Roberts is not is not a reason not to give her a chance. <laughs> what other dreams that I have? I don't know. It must have been a dream, a dream of beans in a dreamlike state of whimsy. As the boat floats on the river, travelling towards the final destination of happiness, whereupon all things coincide and co create and co procreate and coexist and co be do 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 be. That's my new poem. I don't know what you think. It's a... <clears throat> I think it may be a masterpiece. But I'm not sure. It's either a masterpiece. You know, some kind of a winner. A Pulitzer Prize winner. I always say Pulitzer. You know, I'm talking... It's either dynamite, it's either a dynamite poem, or it's not really very good at all. Not sure, not sure, not sure, no, 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 not sure. Oh, I went to the I needed to eat yesterday. I needed to buy some food and I had a little bit of money left just to, enough to get some a few little bits. So that's what I did. I went to I got caught in the bus and Yeah, I caught the bus with my lesso. And I went into the shop. I was going to have a look at the office space or the office supplies stationery thing. It's like this big shop. It used to be Staples and then Staples closed and this shop took over. And it's kind of... I suppose the equivalent to staples. So I was going to try and see about finding out what type of um, whiteboards they have. Because I'm going to be. I've got one whiteboard. But I'm going to get a few more so that I can start playing around and working out some ideas. For these recordings and also for maybe a book and stuff like that and you know how you see mathematicians do they've got these whiteboards and they've got all these uh, calculations and stuff and that's what mine will be but there'll be zero mathematics it will just be ideas that I have and my plan my plan what well, my plan was, I don't know if that's going to happen, but I'm going to have a few of them dotted around. And maybe one inside here as well. Possibly, if I get a light in here, possibly have it on the front, on the door in front of me to remind me of, you know, stuff that I wanted to talk about. 
because pretty much pretty much for the last 13 nearly 14 years I've been doing this off the top of my head without any kind of scripts or hints or reminders there's been a couple of things I've done scripts with with the smoking one I did but that wasn't that was my script that wasn't really I don't know if it was a script so much as I just spent a long time putting it together but generally I just say whatever's in my mind at the time and it seems to come together forever wonderfully wonderfully it's true my words are like glue sticking those ideas together allowing you to change your life forever that was an actual poem that some of that rhymed wow see I do have a brain it does sometimes work it's very sporadic though sometimes wow I was quite pleased with that I've got no idea what I said but that last bit like glue sticking sticking the thoughts together changing a life forever or sticking ideas together yeah that's kind of what hypnosis is just an idea just thoughts you know it's uh I'm on this, uh, oh, my hips, my hips all stiff, I said my hip, oh, basically, um, I can forget what I was saying, what was I saying? stiff hip put me off my flow my ebb and flow above and below um, <laughs> I had a little think of some rhyming words but none of them seem to be appropriate for some reason uh, things I can talk about sleeping sessions I've actually got carpet in this shed just a little bit of carpet that my friend gave me some tiles they're not fitted just loose but I can't see them so it's fine but I think it does um, I think it helps a little bit with sound just a little bit so I went into town yesterday and the I got on the bus I waited for the bus for about 10 minutes spoke to a friend whilst waiting for the bus and got on and I sat down I looked and there was no seats and there was a lady sitting I think she had a kid on the right hand side of the back but all the other seats were took apart from no there was there was a seat next to pretty much everyone but um, that's what there was one seat right at the front so I sat on that 
but I was literally just squashed in so I thought nah so I went back to the back of the bus and I sat on the left hand side of the bus it was the right side if you're as you travel but it's the left side as you look at it from the opposite direction and as I got to where I was going I just got off and there was some people waiting to get on and I said thank you to the bus driver I didn't kiss him or anything I just didn't write him a card I did slip a poem but I do that with a lot of people and uh, I yeah, I went to that store looking for the whiteboards wasn't there so I, I crossed the road eventually I crossed the road and went to walk to Iceland and I had my headphones on so I'm just listening to I think I might have been listening to Whitney Houston but I'm not sure uh, somebody definitely so, or it might have been an audible, audible recording I think I've been listening to the magic of thinking big um, I might have been listening to that now all these people when I say all of them there wasn't a huge amount but there's a lot of people all looking at something so as I'm walking towards Iceland entrance there is I saw at least probably 10 people some of which were walking backwards looking at something and I couldn't couldn't hear anything because I had my headphones on so and then as I got closer to the to the thing I could hear some like yelling or something so I had a little look and it was it was like a, a reenactment of the Jeremy Kyle show if you've ever seen that uh, or Jerry Springer maybe but and there's these people just yelling at each other like really so it was Jeremy Kyle it was really I actually thought I wonder if they're doing a new show maybe you know but they they don't can't afford a studio so they're doing it outside or it could be I was thinking yeah there used to be a show called Jeremy Beadle called Beadle's About and he used to set people up so that they'd get angry uh, I think one example would be yeah his that's it one was the, a man's car and he had a really nice car so what Jeremy Beadle did was he swapped the car with a, a scrap car but it looked similar yeah and then he had cement tipped from a cement mixer all over the car and then the man came home and started to shout and scream and you know get really irate and that's something that Jerry's Jerry uh, not Kennedy Jeremy Kyle that's something that he could do because well he's used to dealing with people that are um It's a bit angry, I suppose that's probably a nicer word, isn't it? Angry. And it kind of gives the viewers everything they need. Kind of gives them that little. And that's what I thought maybe was happening. Maybe Jeremy Kyle had started a new TV show. And there was these people shouting. <laughs> it's like having tantrums in the street. 
it was like toddlers but fully grown adults which is yeah kind of it's not unusual unfortunately not unusual to see adults acting like toddlers it's not unusual to not being able to stop laughing at them la 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 in the end I just I got a bit bored of it and just went and got some food because there was other people watching and just I think the funny bit is when people do that and they're shouting and shouting and then they say what are you all looking at <laughs> what are you what are you staring at like well you it's you know you you're yeah you of course why what do you mean why because you're acting like a little toddler like a little baby in a, an adult's body you're an adult acting like a little toddler having a tantrum it's very amusing it's very funny to watch it's almost I don't know if it's my guilty pleasure but <laughs> I just found it funny adults that have tantrums It's, and I, you know, we're all capable of having tantrums, I know, but those like public tantrums at supermarkets, and it's like, wow, it's just funny. Like, what? So you're now in your 40s or 30s, and there must have been some brain development, surely from the age of three there must have been something something must have occurred you must have some kind of self-awareness surely come on you've had like 16 years or 14 years of education forced upon you so you know you had to go to school you watch television programs you've been on the internet you've read books at some point Come on, you're not three, aren't you? You're not mentally three in your brain. Come on. Come on. I think we should stick them in circuses. Yeah, we should stick them in circuses and we could all watch them put on a show. Like a... The Tantrum Show. They could have a... Or we could have the X Factor we could have a game show like a, a talent show for tantrums because let's face it there's more people out there that can have tantrums that can sing so they could all go on and just have a tantrum about something to so go on with their partner or with their parents or their children or with their best friend who is their best friend three days a week and the rest of the time they hate them but they're their best friend and they're, 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 they're. that would be entertaining that's a Saturday night evening TV show that I would watch oh yes that would be amusing what could we call it though tantrum factor can you hear my stomach my stomach's rumbling what could we call it tantrum why do I think in tantrum and Delilah that doesn't make sense does it tantrum factor um, no, it'd be 
it might get boring after a while though because it seems like I don't know, I've seen quite a few people have tantrums over the years and they seem as if they've read a book on it or they've done a course on it and they've been and they're just using the same phrases and the same words and you know you make me feel this way no one makes you feel anything my friend <laughs> you make me feel this no you don't no one doesn't make you feel no one's in control of how you feel you make me feel when you say that it makes me feel no it doesn't make you feel that's your natural response it doesn't make you feel I can't compute it's too complicated for me for my little brain and I need to blame everybody <laughs> it makes my life happier I just need to blame others yeah well I think life's easier when you don't blame others because it takes away that pressure I think allows you to relax allows you to step out of that cycle of well it's lies really isn't it a cycle of stupidity blaming everyone else it's everyone else's fault no it's not not really some people are to blame obviously for their actions of course but our lives we make decisions we make choices don't we I've made some most ridiculous decisions in the world I still do I did it recently constantly making stupid decisions it's ridiculous it's like I've got a I need to perhaps I need to start doing some of the stuff that I talk about I need to start you know living it rather than just talking about it Although last night was the first, it was the second night, the second day that I'd woken up at about seven o'clock in the morning. And I'd gone to bed early the night before. Second time, two days in a row. Yesterday just it happened because I was so tired. Today it happened because I was tired, but I also had to set my alarm because I have an appointment to go to which is fairly early normally my appointments are late afternoon but this one is a lot earlier than that so I, I needed to if I didn't go to bed I would have stayed up till maybe 7 which means I would have had 8, 9, 10 three hours sleep which ain't enough really it really ain't enough not, oh it can be sometimes three hours sleep is a hell of a lot better than one hour sleep I'd say but well I can do that sometimes I can have a little nap for an hour or sometimes and I just feel so good afterwards like oh I'm awake now. Oh, you, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Sometimes. <clears throat> and other times, not so much. It all depends, really. Oh, depends upon things. Blah, blah, blah. So, I hope that I've bored you enough. <laughs> you fall asleep. 
and uh, I really could fall asleep myself. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to go. Please remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye, 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 bye.